Hey everyone, welcome to Divine Conversation. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It's very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up guys? So what I have here are your January mid-month check-ins, yes? January 2019. So because I was working on the six month forecasts for 2019 and I was wanted to get those out before the 1st of January, I wasn't able to do full January readings for the collective. So I am bringing you guys a mid month check in. Uh, this is going to be a normal um, general freestyle reading, uh, just like always. I'm using the Golden Universal Tarot and I am using the Unicorn Oracle. Yeah. Um, and so this is just this general normal reading. We are going to be looking at what's going on currently around you since we already in the are already are in the month of January. We're going to be looking at what's currently going on around you and then what could be coming up down the line at the end of the month. So we're looking at for that. We're, we're, uh, we're looking at this from around the 15th to the 31st. Yeah. I want to want to wish a special happy birthday to all the Capricorns out there. Very happy birthday to you. We are smack dab in the middle of Capricorn season. I hope you guys are having a great birthday. I hope everybody had a great holiday. We are out of the holiday season now, so we might be going through that, you know, post-holiday funk, uh, the uh, seasonal depression maybe, but I hope everyone's doing well. Um, if you would like a personal reading, go ahead and email me. These are general readings, so take what resonates and leave what doesn't. The energies are fluid. They could go either way. We could either be talking about you personally, or we could be talking about uh, someone that you're connecting with. Cross watchers, you know, it, take, what it, take it as it resonates. Also, everybody, just take it as it resonates. And again, if you would like a personal reading, go ahead and email me, and I can get that set up for you. Yeah, I believe that's it. Ooh, um, good news. I am back at Om Shanti Bookshop here in, in the East Village of New York City. It is on East 14th Street. That is between 3rd and 4th. No, I'm sorry. That's between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. There it is. Um, but I'm going to be there Fridays now from 11 to 5 p.m. So go ahead and uh, you can give them a call. The email address, I'm sorry, the website is in the description box below. So you can go there, get their phone number, give them a call if you would like to... Uh, uh, book a reading in advance that can happen yeah and actually you know that way you don't have to potentially wait if someone else got in before you yes okay I think that's it so without further ado we're gonna get straight to it yes Aha. hey there Pisces welcome to your reading for mid-January 2019 thank you so much for tuning in let's get straight into it shall we Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for mid-January 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Pisces, so um, already I'm seeing a pink energy for you. Um, and to me, pink stands for unconditional love, divine love. And I really feel like you are very much embodying this right now, or at least you're trying to. For some of you, I feel like you're going through a pretty tumultuous time. Um, and that's, you know, pretty common nowadays. We all kind of are, but... In terms of this, I really feel like some of you are deep in the lesson of um, unity, oneness, unconditional love, divine love. And for many of you that are in this state right now, you know, you're learning the lesson of Pisces, hardcore. And that would be, you know, why you manifested in this world uh, with this particular sign um, but it would most likely be a major placement I feel like it would probably be a Piscean moon um, or rising for the most part because if it's if you're a Pisces Sun you know your soul already embodies these energies so I'm think I'm, I'm really I'm really speaking to those who are uh, like a Pisces um, sun, I'm sorry a Pisces moon or a Pisces rising for this this little piece uh, that I'm picking up on, but um, so you're learning 
what it truly means to be unconditionally loving. Um, you're in the process of doing that. You're going through situations that are leading you down that path of understanding. Um, and then also through that, you're learning a really, some of you are really, really learning a tough lesson in boundaries. And that really is a hard lesson to learn. Um, I mean, I know personally, I, it's, it's uh, your ego definitely can flare up with that now, but especially, you know, it kind of feels, it almost feels like a, an oxymoron in a sense where you're learning to, you're learning how we are all connected, we're all one, and you're learning to hold unconditional love for everything and everyone, but at the same time, you're learning to keep your own personal healthy boundaries in place, okay? It's really interesting. All right, Pisces. So, okay, so now I'm seeing green here. I'm gonna give you one more shuffle and I'm gonna get into the cards, but now I see green also. So for many of you, this absolutely has to do with the heart chakra. Um, and I really feel like you're going through a situation where you are expanding uh, your heart chakra. Boop, you know, you're, you're, you're making it, it's getting larger, it's expanding, it's growing, it's, it, it's capacity for love is expanding, okay? Which is really quite beautiful. Yep, here we go. Starting you off with the hermit. All right, Pisces, so you're definitely doing, you're in, uh, many of you, I feel like, are in a situation in which you are, number one, in hermit mode. Okay, that's normal. A lot of the water signs are, especially Cancerians. But um, you're really being forced within here. And yeah, you might be in an energy where you kind of want to just be going within anyway, but... Um, the the situation at hand is making it so that you know you really have no choice but to go within and figure things out from there okay you could also be dealing with a virgo yes you really could be dealing with the virgo so because here's the queen of pentacles i'm sorry i, I apologize that the lighting is weird but the sun is coming through and i kind of want to let it happen because it's beautiful but i apologize if you can't really see the cards too well but um anyway so you have the Queen of Pentacles here. So yes, there uh, there probably is a Virgo. Or well, for some of you, there's Virgo energy around. Either you're de you're you're connecting with a Virgo, or you have Virgo in a major placement, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Um, this is for Pisces. Keep that in mind. But um, some of you also could be dealing with like a Taurus or a Capricorn here. Actually, the Queen of Pentacles, officially it being a, uh, a cardinal energy, that would talk about Capricorn. But some of you are really learning the lesson of unconditional love, that motherly love, the, the compassion and the, the commitment. But you're also learning to be firm and um, not really take any BS, you know. To me, the Queen of Pentacles is a lot like the Queen of Swords, but she's much more compassionate. She does have more emotional involvement than the Queen of Swords would probably even think about, you know, think about um, having or holding. You have the Eight of Cups now, so definitely walking away from something. And I feel basically, to be honest, what, I'm, what I just felt with this Eight of Cups here, this is your energy, Pisces. So you are on the move. Okay, uh, and this definitely has to do with this learning unconditional love, learning divine love, divine um, connectedness and all that stuff, how we're all one and all that. And you're leaving behind a lot of things that you may have held on to in the past. Um, for some of you, there is a mother figure here that is highly influential. I mean, either good or bad, you know, take it as it resonates. But you might be, for some of you, you might be walking away from some sort of family situation because you're starting to understand the toxicity in it. You're starting to under, or trust, it's, it, you're starting to understand or see how it no longer resonates with you, how they no longer resonate with you, how you're, you're on a different vibratory level, which is not good or bad. It's just different. And so, um, you know, you're learning, you're learning to walk away from the things that no longer serve you, uh, and that is absolutely part of the lesson of unconditional love. And that's in holding unconditional love for yourself by not forcing yourself to stay in a position that doesn't resonate with you um, because that can just cause problems in the end, okay? And then finally, you have the four of pentacles. This is just your overall energy, Pisces. So uh, for some of you, you might be hanging on to something too much. Um, for some of you also, you might be holding on to your finances, probably being um, pretty 
you know, keeping keeping your finances in check, probably not trying to spend too much money right now, which makes sense. It is January. You know, we just came out of the holiday season. People tend to be a little on the broke-ish side. Not to say that you're broke necessarily, but maybe. Who knows? doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but... What I, what I really do see with the Four of Pentacles here is that, yes, you are holding on to something, but you're holding on to you. You're learning on to hold. I heard for some of you, you're learning to hold on to your integrity here. Um, you're learning about what your integrity truly stands for or what you truly stands for as an integrous person. There goes Archangel Michael. Um, but you're learning to, you're learning what integrity really does mean for you. And so you're holding on to that. You're keeping you're you're replacing attachment with wisdom or replacing yes replacing attachment with wisdom yeah all right so let's get in the first set of surrounding energy so the first row is going to be uh the what you're currently going through you know from the beginning of the month to now and then the second row is going to be you know towards the end of the month what could be coming through okay so here we go. First set of surrounding energies for your current energy. You have the Page of Cups. All right. Well, here you are, Pisces. Um, I definitely, I do see this as a Piscean card. Um, the Page of Cups, pages are tend to be messengers. You may get a message from someone, a message of love, of unconditional love. This could be uh, communicating with spirit, too, about what unconditional love truly means for you um, and what it truly means on also a universal scale. Um, but this is also, I see this as a cup uh, or as a card of emotional discovery, learning new things about your emotions. It's also the dreamer card. So a lot of what you're going through the, through this unconditionally loving state is learning, is um, reacclimating for some of you or learning about what it is you truly desire, uh, dreaming about what it is you truly desire. And through this unconditionally loving phase or learning about unconditional love, you are allowing yourself to really, really dream. It could even be some of you may want to reconcile with somebody, okay? this The Page of Cups could be a reconciliation card. Um, some of you could be walking away from tendencies or habits that you've had in the past that uh, uh, may have caused turmoil with someone, potentially with a Virgo, or um, in, uh, vice versa. There could be a Virgo around you that could be you know, walking away from tendencies of the past and wanting to reconcile, okay? This is a general reading. So take what resonates and leave what doesn't. But I do feel like someone here, someone here definitely, they may have even gotten humbled and are now wanting to come back because they see the situation different. Page of Cups is coupled with, yeah, look at that, the Knight of Cups. So someone definitely here, um, wants to reconcile, <clears throat> is in the process of understanding how to reconcile. Um, this could be, I, I also see, I see the knights and the pages as uh, mutable energies. So Pisces, this could be you also. Um, or it could be another water sign, Cancer, Cancer, another Pisces, or a Scorpio. We have a lot of earth and a lot of water here so far. So this could be an earth-water dynamic. You could have earth and water in your chart. Now, this is, uh, I definitely, okay, so for some of you, there is someone here. It could potentially be this Virgo or maybe another Earth sign. doesn't have to be, but um, I definitely see someone has gone, has maybe grown up a little bit, gone from the page to the night, and now really does, is either, either wants to make some sort of offer, make some sort of reconciliation, or is seriously thinking about it at this point, okay? Because you do have energies of walking away from something in the past that doesn't really serve. Um, now, at the same time, the Knight of Cups can also talk about creative expression. So I, I could, I do see some of you just moving forward, some Pisces, just moving forward and um, with an open heart and uh, wanting to creatively express yourselves. This could be through music, through dance, any sort of artistic create uh, artistic expression, or really just any expression at all that um, fulfills you, fills you with a sense of happiness with joy um, uh, feeds or, or, or nurtures your emotions or is just nurturing in any in some way okay uh, so if that resonates with you I recommend maybe you know spending some time producing some art yeah whatever that would be for you so the second set of surrounding energies you have here we have woof, okay well we have the knight of swords now this could be a Gemini or another air sign 
um, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, but communication here, okay? So there's definitely an energy of wanting to communicate. Now, for some of you, <laughs> what I'm seeing here is this person here with the Page of Cups and the Knight of Cups. It could be you, Pisces, because this is water, but it could be the other person um, wants to communicate, wants to reconcile, wants to offer some sort of peace offering, uh, maybe some sort of olive branch or whatnot. This could be a, re a romantic relationship. It could be a partnership, um, business partnership, a friendship, whatever. It doesn't have to be romantic. It could be anything, okay? But then for some of you, I'm seeing that this, the other side of the equation is not so thrilled, has a lot to say. Um, it's kind of what I'm picking up here is kind of an energy of, <laughs> is an energy of um, well, what about this and what about that? And you said this and you said that. What am I just supposed to forget about all of that? What, what do you have to say about that? I mean, and, and to, to a certain extent, yeah, you do have a point there. But at the same time, um, it's really not going to serve anyone to really be that combat combative. Uh, unless this person is not genuine, unless you're picking up, and Pisceans can be, are, are pretty intuitive, you know, just like any water sign. But unless you're picking up that this person is anything less than genuine, okay, I get it. But if they, if, you know, if you're just, if you're just trying to be spiteful at this point, that's just, it's not going to help anything, you know, it's just going to make things worse. All right. <laughs> the Knight of Swords is coupled with, wow, the Tower. So, I do see that some of you, uh, this may have already happened, or it may be coming, you know, sometime between, be, before mid-month, I guess, I don't know, but for some of you, there has been a conversation, or there will be a conversation, and, you know, one half of the situation wants to reconcile, and the other half of the situation is like, oh, no, nobody. What about the, check this out and just draws the line in the sand and it creates a tower moment, okay? And I'm what I'm seeing is this, for this group, um, this person that's symbolized by the Knight of Swords, it could be an air sign, but it does not have to be. They bring some sort of truth that creates a sort of tower moment for someone. So then also Pisces, for those of you that are really going through this lesson of understanding or learning or, or, or you know, balancing out what unconditional love really means for you and embodying that, there are some things that this other person may say to you that helps you realize a deeper truth about the situation, okay? Um, Oof, but someone is bringing the heat here. <laughs> someone is definitely bringing the heat and it's creating a tower moment. Now, also, Pisces, you could be that person that's creating the tower moment because, like I said, um, I mean, you could be the, the Knight of Swords here because, like I, like I said, some of you, yes, you're learning this lesson of unconditional love, but you're also learning to place boundaries. And if you may, like, say, for example, you were a pushover of sorts in the past, well, now you're not allowing that to happen any longer. And so if someone is coming back to you trying to kiss up, trying to make up, and blah, 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 and they're just running the same old game like they did last time, you could be this person that's saying, back off because I'm not standing for this anymore, okay? So there it is. Please excuse the manicure, guys. Anyway, your challenge for uh, this section here you have, yeah, Three of Swords. So the challenge is getting over the heartbreak, um, especially there, I really do see there could be some sort of communication here, um, or at least there needs to be, but this, is all, this all has to do with the heartbreak that has been involved in this situation. Three of Swords is coupled with, yeah. The challenge definitely is moving away from this. Six of Swords, okay? Yep. And this does feel challenging because I do feel like there's some ego and some pride involved. This might've been a really tough situation. Um, and especially since, you know, you have the Hermit as your first card, it may have been so intense that it really pushed you deep within to face some hard truths. And so now someone may be coming back around to try and, you know, uh, either reconcile or just get back in if this is like a narcissistic energy. And, you know, you're having to really put the end to this 
you know, say what you need to say and then move forward, okay? But for some of you, this does feel like it's a difficult situation because it's hard to let go of this person or this attachment, whatnot, whatever. And yeah, I totally get that. <laughs> I totally get it. Okay, the closing message here for the end of this section here, we have the King of Wands. Now, you could be dealing with a fire sign, uh, particularly a Leo, but it could be an Aries or a Sagittarius as well. Um, this is confidence, okay? I do see, for some of you, I see that someone is trying to come back around. Um, this could be, you know, the, fire, the, the King of Wands or... Uh, could just be a very prideful, egotistical person, someone who's just really going after what he he or she wants and doesn't really care about anybody else. I am picking up some of that for you, a narcissistic energy. And this person might be coming back because they may want to, you know, get freaky and all that and, you know, just have sex or whatnot. Um, and for some of you, that's what this relationship was, to be honest for at least for this person that's represented by the king of wands now could be you pisces or it could, uh, it could be the other person but for some of you that's just what this situation was it was sexual but for one person for this person the king of wands energy but for the other part of the equation there was love here and that's where this three of swords is coming into play because it's like you i actually had feelings for you or i actually fell in love with you and you played me and now you want to come back around and do it again i don't think so or at least that's the option or that's how it could play out. Now, whether you choose to take this person back or not, that's up to you. But, I mean, if that's the case, just remember what got you here to begin with. And maybe if they're saying, oh, I've changed, because I feel like this King of Wands would be saying that, oh, I'm changed, I'm not that same person, blah, blah, blah. I feel like this person is someone that would say anything to get what they want. King of Wands will say or do anything to get what they want because all they care about is what they desire, right? That's when it's negatively aspected. Um, and honestly, if that's the case, move on, like walk away from this situation. Now, for some of you, this is needing to embody this King of Wands energy, needing to embody the confidence, the strength, to, to go after what it is you want because some of you do have this page of cups, this dreamer energy here. And I feel like for those, whoever that's resonating for, um, you've been the type of person to put your dreams on the back burner. So that be, could be another um, facet to this le le lesson, this Piscean lesson in unconditional divine love and unity in that, um, yes, you can be there for others, but don't put yourself on the back burner, okay? So you're needing to have this confidence to pursue what it is you truly desire right king of wands is coupled with there it is nine of cups you are needing some of you are really needing to um step up and go for what it is you want all right now for this for, but that okay to the other part of the equation for those of you that are dealing with a, a pretty narcissistic energy Nine of Cups is, to me, is that temporary satisfaction. The one night stand type energy. It's getting what you want for the moment, but it's, it may not necessarily be lasting. And so if you want to still engage with that, there's nothing wrong with it. But if that's a source of heartbreak for you, then it seems pretty foolish to go back into it. Now, I understand it might be pretty difficult not to, but I'm hearing narcissistic energy very strongly here, guys. Okay, so, um, you know, this really could be a quite, quite a narcissistic situation. Okay, so getting into your second set here, the last part of January. Let's see what we've got for you. First set of surrounding energies, you have judgment. So I do see some of you either you you reconcile with this person, you get to the situation where um, the relationship is resurrected in a new way. This is almost like a phoenix from the ashes risen type of situation. Or you completely transform and you go in a completely different direction. All right. You have the opportunity to do this, but utilizing this uh, night, I'm sorry, page of, Pente uh, of page of cups energy, this dreamer energy. Um, that's how you're going to get to 
understand where it is you truly want to go, which can lead to that transformation, okay? Uh, judgment is coupled with, woo-wee, the five of swords. So, uh, for some of you that are dealing with a narcissistic energy, I do not think they're gonna like this at all. And the thing about it is, this is jealousy. Seeing you let go and seeing that, you know, basically telling them that you don't need them any longer. And this is not for selfish reasons. This is not to be spiteful. This is, I would hope at least, because that's not going to help anything. That's just giving into that Five of Swords energy. So some of you might be almost faking a resurrection just to get back at someone, and I definitely would not recommend that. That that I mean, don't don't please don't please don't let me tell you what to do. But I, I, that's just fighting fire with fire, and you know that's keeping that cycle going that you you're trying to break out of. Okay. Um, but there's also, if this is genuine, if you're really genuinely rising up and answering the call of the universe or your higher self to move in a different direction, whoever you're moving away from is probably going to put up a fight. Um, and that would, that, I mean, that's typical narcissism. The moment that you separate from them or you try to go be independent in some way or try to go in a, in a new direction that does not involve them is the moment that they start to get hostile. And that is a mind control tactic because often um, those of us that really are affected by narcissists tend to be empathic. And so when they react in that way, it hits us pretty hard. And so it's a perfect way to keep us, quote, in line, right? So they can continue to control us. So be careful of that, all right? Second set of surrounding energies, you have the five of pentacles. Someone's feeling left out in the cold now. And this could be that narcissistic energy. But also, don't allow them to twist things and and make you feel left out in the cold. How would that happen? Well, if they were to get under your skin and cause you to not follow through with what it is you originally planned on doing, then in, a, in fact, you are leaving yourself out in the cold. And I feel like some of you are going to end up back in that situation and wake up and realize, you know, the opportunity that was missed, the opportunity in moving on with your life and staying independent and working on your own in independence and abundance and stability on your own, you're going to recognize that um, missed opportunity and you're going to feel like this, left out in the cold. I mean, I know personally I've been there, um, so just be cautious of that. Now, you do have two fives oh, here, okay? So there's definitely some change coming. But change five can be a pretty uh, difficult number because change can be tough regardless of whether you're a, a mutable cardinal um, or fixed sign it can be tough all right regardless five of pentacles is coupled with Woo-wee, the queen of swords. So you really could be dealing with another, uh, uh, with an air sign, um, potentially a Libra here, or it does, or just an Aquarius or a Gemini, but this is, okay, see, so the queen of swords is saying here, no, you're not gonna put me out in the cold here, buddy. I mean, I've made up my decision. You can rant and rave all you want, but I'm going in this direction, and it is incredibly obvious that I don't need to be associated with you anymore because of the fight and the drama you are trying to cause. Five of Swords. You are trying to keep this old cycle going of keeping me left out in the cold or feeling left out in the cold, feeling rejected in some way um, in order to keep me down, and that is not happening any longer, says the Queen of Swords. All right. Um, now, also, though, be careful with the Queen of Swords because you push her. I mean, she's already pretty intense and can be quite aggressive. But if you push her too far, she will get destructive. Like she will really get nasty, real nasty, real quick, like cut you up. And her sword is razor sharp, honey. You may not even feel that slice until hours later when it's like throbbing now and it's deep as fuck, right? So be careful with that energy, but also hold your ground, okay? Your challenge in this upcoming energy, you have, ah, the star. You could be dealing with an Aquarian. There's a lot of air energy here. You really could be dealing with another air sign, um, or with, excuse me, with an air sign. 
but the star is about healing. So the challenge here in this upcoming energy is healing. It's also about wish fulfillment, but you see, so is the Nine of Cups, but the Nine of Cups wish fulfillment can be quite fleeting. It's like that, that, moment, that momentary satisfaction. So that's often why, um, uh, other than the fact that it's a cups suit, so it symbolizes water or fluid, this also could be why the Nine of Cups can symbolize drowning your sorrows, dr uh, you know, um, drinking, drinking your, uh, just drinking in general, um, one night stands, that kind of thing, okay? But the star is the long-term fulfillment, the larger form of fulfillment here. And that is what you're truly going after. So the challenge in this upcoming energy, I mean, it's gonna be challenging enough to walk away from this situation with the Eight of Cups. But really the challenge here is to continue moving so that you can heal. Basically, <laughs> the star is coupled with, yes, Ace of Pentacles. Healing the situation, closing out the cycle, and creating a brand new start. Now, with that said, this is not going to be something that's quick, okay? This is not going to be a quick transition. First of all, the star is major arcana, so that is a much larger cycle. It's a spiritual cycle. It's a soul cycle. <laughs> soul cycle. <laughs> but um, those cycles are much longer in the reference of time as we understand it. Now, on the soul level, time doesn't exist, so it make, that makes more sense. But then when, it come, when you come down to the 3D level, you know, time is a thing for us so far. And so with the Ace of Pentacles, also Pentacles is a slow moving situation. So the combined with the two, this is not going to be all that easy. This is not, and, and the, mo the main reason why it's not gonna be that easy is because it's just going to take a good amount of time. Spirit just said, deep healing takes time, all right? So that is, that's the challenge here, but you can do it. And I really feel like you, many of you really, really want to do this. Um, and that's perfect. Holding that energy will help you get through it. All right. But this really is necessary. Uh, in, in, in a way, you can't really escape it because of this hermit energy up in the, the crowning you're reading, the very first card and the overall energy, you're facing yourself and it's come to a point for just like the rest of us, there are things that you just cannot run from or cannot deny any longer, okay? Uh, the closing message for the second half for the end of your month or the potential outcome, you've got, bam, look at that, Pisces, the Ten of Cups. And it's falling right under the Nine of Cups. So I feel like for some of you, you learned how depleting this um, momentary satisfaction is that's represented by the Nine of Cups here. And so you're, it's almost as if you are conserving your energy in order to get you to that next level, to the Ten of Cups. Now the Ten of Cups is family, it's emotions. I really feel like this is, also, this is to me, this is your energy, okay, Pisces. This is the unconditional love, the divine love, the community, the family, the, you know, the spirit, the, the oneness, okay? This is the oneness. This is the emotional completion. This is coming to, you know, understanding that, you know, we are all one. We all are brothers and sisters. We all deserve love. We all deserve respect. So this is ultimately what you are working on learning here, okay? And you have a serious opportunity to achieve that over the next coming months, I would say, all right? But this is like kicking off for you now. Ten of Cups is coupled with, ooh, the Two of Swords. So the lesson continues, all right? So, okay, you're being faced with this Ten of Cups energy. But some of you may be refusing to really look at it because in order to really look at it, you have to really look at yourself, all right? I really do feel like some of you are struggling with this lesson in unconditional love here. Um, it's hard, but this is the ego getting in the way for most of you that are dealing with it in this way. Now, for some of you, you're, you're opening up to this with the Two of Swords here, because I'm not reading reversals. So for some of you, this could mean that you are opening your eyes to it finally after a long period of not wanting to see the truth about it, the
the, I mean, specifically the truth about it, because I really do feel like you have been feeling this energy just about all your life. But instead of you, but instead of um, looking at it from a mature sense, you were looking at it from a little more of an adolescent or immature sense with the page of cups. But now you're, you're growing, you're maturing to the knight of cups. So you're, tr you're looking at things on a deeper level and you're starting to see things as they truly are. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to get into your oracle guidance here from the unicorns. All right, one more shuffle for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for our January mid-month check-in. Let's see what we've got for you, Pisces. What advice do we have from the unicorns? There we go. Passion. All right. I like that. Oh, I encourage too. You are, uh, you are safe. Fear is an illusion. Set strong boundaries. And that's really a part of the message that I was channeling earlier. But here you have passion. Do what excites you. Get fired up about your life. Increase your energy levels. Hold on to the passion of the situation. Don't let go of what you are passionate about. Don't let, if, and it's, I really feel like some of you have a serious fire in your belly towards, uh, or maybe a fire on your ass to <laughs> move on to something else, something new. Change your life, up, uh, upgrade, level up. Um, take more responsibility for your life. Take more control for your life. Do not let someone put that fire out. If that fire is to go out, you do it on your own. Do not let somebody else put that out for you. Okay? You deserve to go after what it is you are passionate about. Hello, for some of you, I was channeling that energy here with the King of Wands. Be fiery. Show who you truly are. Embrace who you truly are. Love who you truly are. And pursue what it is you truly desire. Don't let anyone else tell you not to or that it's stupid. What? No, screw them. Ugh. <laughs> hmm. All right, Pisces. So there it is. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you would like a personal look into your situation, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is in the description box below. But I hope you guys have a great month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of February. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye.